Okay, so without further ado, we shall move on to the first of three presentations uh, for this afternoon. Um, and please let me introduce to you Peter Cruz from CSIS, who's going to talk to you about NeverQuest, the crime as a service, and uh, on the hunt for the big bucks. Yes. Okay, thanks. Is this on? Anybody can hear me? So, uh, good afternoon. I uh, hope I'm not going to bore you too much, so I know how it feels being the first one after lunch. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep you on your toes. Uh, just a quick rundown on the agenda for today. I've got like 30 minutes. That's uh, definitely not enough time to cover this, uh, but I'll do my best anyways. Uh, the quest begins, overview, abstract, what is never quest, code and protocol analysis, uh, prevalence and geographical spread, uh, something about the vulnerability in Pony, which is being used as a first stage uh, infection and being used also to extract. Uh, username and passwords uh, in, in many of the most prevalent NeverQuest VouchTrack campaigns. Um, we're going to dig into the infrastructure, look at uh, the uh, command and control servers, uh, look at uh, how they, they actually were uh, operating, uh, yeah, server infrastructure, uh, the panel and the money mule accounts, potential loss of millions and, uh, and the missing link. And then finally, the latest development. I've been uh, brushing this up because, as you know, Virus bulletin uh, presentations are always like four months, uh, you know, in, in the past, and it always gets like outdated really quickly. So I had to like uh, put in the latest stuff uh, that we see uh, from from this uh, criminal gang, and then um, I'm gonna share some Yarrow rules for your hunting pleasures. So let the quest begin. So never quest is also known by other names. Uh, those are just one of them. Some of them, um, it's it's another crime as a service. Uh, they're very good at, uh, at, at picking those people they want to, uh, uh, you know, get into their services. So it's not like an open crime as a service, but which you can, uh, you know, trawl through the underground websites. These, these are very particular about uh, the, the people they, they get involved in, in the operation. Um, USNIF uh, is the foundation, actually, and, and it later evolved into what you, what you know as GOSI. Uh, GOSI re-emerged as, as a GOSI or Prima, Prima Malka. Um, NeverQuest was born out of that, and it's the evolution in trading, trading, uh, trading banking uh, development. It was first discovered in, in the mid of 2013, and in December 2014, we found that NeverQuest implemented some new functions, and there actually is also, as you'll see, uh, a new version out. Uh, kind of confusion in, in, in the industry generally about the, uh, what is GoesNim and stuff. Just to make it quite clear, it, GoesNim is a, is a confusion. It's not really a, it's not really a new uh, banking trojan that is more a, a loader, which were used to, to load the, the, the main component and the various modules uh, in the NeverQuest. Um, actually, it goes way back to the 67, uh, 66 service, which is, has tied way back to 2008. That is one in the dawn of, of uh, banking trojans, really. Uh, as you probably already know, Nikita Kuzmin was arrested in January 2013. Uh, Gose Premierica code was leaked, and, and those were also being developed and has been maintained. And, and uh, like many other trojan bankers, uh, we see that uh, the source code is getting leaked when, when they kind of uh, discontinue their projects. Um, the internal name of Gose was ISFB. Uh, and, and the new panel was reported back in, in October 2014. I think we actually the first that found it. Bar total hunting for NeverQuest. Um, yeah, okay, let's let's just see what is just kind of banking Trojan has browser hooking facilities. It um, it can do site redirects. It can do HTML manipulation. It can basically change the whole content of a website, which is also some of the ways that it does when it does social engineering. Uh, it kills antivirus uh, products, which is for, you know, in, in a business like ours, it's not something that is uh, completely new, but uh, it's something that we don't see so much in, in Trojan bankers. Uh, it had men in the browser facilities, so it's able to, uh, to, to hook into the browser and do various things. Uh, it has web injects, just like we've seen in the, in the best SUSE style. Uh, it, can do, it can do web injects, and I'll, I'll go further into that when, when this presentation progresses. And it, it, it harvests uh, browser data on a regular basis. So uh, it has all the functionalities that you will usually see as, as a banking Trojan. So um, it, it, it has, a, it has a, actually the, the latest version of, of, uh, of NeverQuest or VavTrack. Uh, they call it Build2, uh, the authors. And, um, and it actually, the latest development is that it now has a failover DJ. It has a primary DJ, it has a secondary DJ. 
Uh, it uses a sort of random GGA for the fallback. Uh, it's been actually been there for, for quite a while. It's been there since 2014, since they implemented the Tor uh, to web. Uh, common distribution methods uh, in, in this regard is uh, emails, uh, where they use uh, uh, the, you know, the, the usual loader uh, methods where they implement macros in, in documents. And when the user opens the, the, the document, it, it will, if they then activate the macro, it, they will also activate the payload and then they will download uh, typically, typically Pony. Uh, they, also, uh, they also run uh, the usual uh, crime as a service where they use export kits. They're going through the changes like everyone else in the business right now from the, from the demise of, of Angler since the, some of the guys in, in Russia got arrested that was involved in the Lurk uh, operation. The, the guys behind Angler got kind of scared that the that the court that they will go to that they will actually reveal them, so they decided to to uh, to abandon uh, the Angler project, which means the people are now moving to Neutrino and lately been moving to Rick, which is also some of the stuff that we see in, in EverQuest. They are being distributed through the WIC, uh, to the to the Rick uh, export kit. First aids uh, oftentimes download Pony, which is available to everyone. If you want to search Google for for code, uh, you'll probably get a backdoor Pony. But uh, but the re the thing is that the pony is, is available to anyone. It's a builder basically, and you can you can set it up like you want, and uh, and it's very effective at harvesting um, uh, passwords from from the from the client. So when it runs, it will basically steal everything you have, like FTP passwords, email passwords, uh, 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 passwords in your browser, stuff like that. So it will harvest everything. Uh, so pony been around a while. They used to demo it back in the time. Now it's not really relevant because everybody can go get pony. Um, well, actually, one of the interesting things is, is the comprehensive list of targets that, that Pony actually supports. It has more than 1,000 uh, unique targets in, in, their, in, their, in their various uh, kind of web injects. That is, the, that is the biggest list of targets that we have ever seen in a Trojan Banker uh, family before, uh, ever. So it, it, in, in that way, it's very, very interesting that they actually target so many different brands. Uh, lately, they've been targeting uh, various sectors outside of the financial sector. So they're also looking for other things. They're looking for um, um, uh, job recruitment websites, um, uh, stock market uh, websites, stuff like that. So when, 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 it's, when it's been executed, what happens is that, first of all, it will typically download Pony in the first stage, and then that it will drop uh, the loader. The loader will go into the into the uh, into the program data folder, which means that at some point, you know, the user has to have some rights in the system for it to execute, actually to, to run in, in a particular way. It is in a in a 32-bit and it's a 64-bit supported version as well. So they go they run both on 32 and, and 64. Uh, NeverQuest executes uh, the dropped DNL and uses the registry service V2 to to actually run to to add it to the registry. So it's being rerun every time the, re the machine reboots. It enrolls the, uh, the bot uh, with, with the usual way that Bangor Trojan works. So it, it, it basically just enrolls it with, some, with, some, with, a, with a project ID and, and with a session, a PHP session ID. That's actually an encoded cookie session of value. NeverQuest probably has the largest set of comprehensive targets. That's, uh, one, of, one of the things, several NeverQuest campaigns have recently been pushed uh, the point of sale malware as well. So we are also seeing them push uh, additional malware. Uh, maybe we can even call it a cocktail, like a third stage. So they also interested. They, they also push uh, point of sale malware. That's that's one of the uh, recent developments we have been looking at. It's kind of interesting. There's particular one campaign that does that. Uh, we're looking at 20, 26 different campaigns related to NeverQuest. So that illustrates that it's a it's a crime as a service. Latest project campy is a project 238. Actually, it's 244 if I remember correctly now. So things have happened since I wrote that. Uh, yet again, we see them uh, implement new targets, including investment retirement services such as Vanguard and, and Paychex, most of them U.S. Uh, services, uh, but also kind of, if you look at, at their target list, if you look at their, their infection maps, then you'll see that they're also very, like, global. They, they're, they're not like uh, what you see usually with Bangatroidans. They're not specifically interested in one country only. Since they spread across many different campaigns, you'll see that there's different uh, 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 perps that are working this also uh, tend to to, to, um, to work in, in various countries. Infected users should fear for their entire retirement savings being stolen, and I can tell you already that we have seen that being done 
so I'm gonna step into the panel in, in, in later in this presentation so you can actually see what goes on behind the scenes. Uh, what is most disturbing about NeverQuest is the amount of infected users, that's one thing, but also the, the, the very targeted method they're using. They're going for corporate businesses and the corporate businesses oftentimes have a lot of money on the banking accounts. So they're cashing out in a similar manner that we're seeing the CEO fraud being done. So they're using, most of, most of all, they're using banks in, in, the, in the Asian region. So they use banks in, in China, they use banks in Hong Kong to cash out. And that's some of the stuff that we also see being set up when you look at the CEO fraud st stuff. So we're looking at a lot of money. We're looking at, at millions of pounds. We're looking at millions of dollars that potentially could get lost. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know, document that in a while. So it has several layers of protecting itself from detection and from basically from, from being analyzed. Uh, there's nothing really much, so much new to that, but it has uh, many of different anti-debugging things. Uh, it makes uh, reversing a, a, a pain in the ass, to be honest. Um, the command and control uh, will respond with, with, a with, a, with a list of items. Uh, you can see the overview here. Uh, after the HTTP request is done, uh, the triple it will get with respond, which, uh, is, uh, which then provide the configuration or the, the web injects. They changed that. So they actually changed that in the, in the version two. So now it's not so easy doing this. Uh, first, first and foremost, they're doing a lot of block listing. So, uh, so if they see that we are running stuff in a, in a, in a like a, in a sandbox environment that we have a machine dedicated to run Rapturag and to run uh, NeverQuest, they they will actually when they see too many like requests coming from the same IP, they will block that IP automatically. So it, it makes it also a pain to actually extract the, uh, the config files automatically. So that's one of the things they just did, besides from a lot of other stuff. Also, one of the things that is notable is that uh, the configuration file uh, used to be stored uh, on, the, on the machine. Now it's actually been stored in memory and it's being encrypted. So you have to pull it out. You cannot make a memory dump and just you know, get the config file, which you used to do. You have to, you have to decrypt the, the config file as well. Um, yes. and. Basically, uh, this is also some of the stuff that we that we found out. I don't know how visible it is to you guys, but this is this is when we started looking into them. Obviously, many of these setups operations have uh, spam and mail modules and and and, and servers for the purpose of of, of sending out uh, the spam mails. What we were able to do, we were able to get into that uh, spam uh, server, and we were able to look at what when they did their spamming campaigns. We were able to extract all the information on a regular basis. So uh, with that information, we were able to see when the campaign started, what the content would be. We could even get uh, the hashes, we could get the files and do analysis. So every time they pushed a new version, they pushed a new spam run, we could get it directly from the, from the spam server, which was kind of uh, convenient. We can still do that, by the way, so we're doing that automatically, extracting all the new spam mails they're sending out, and, we, we, and that way we get all the new campaigns. If you look at the, at the infections, you will see that the US is, is definitely the one with, with the most infections. You will then see that there are, that there are England and the UK, which is also kind of uh, interesting. We got many customers in the UK, which has, of course, sparked their interest into this banking Troiden because it, our customers are actually taking quite a lot of losses uh, due to, to NeverQuest and Webtrack. Huh? Yeah, there's 20,000. So if you look at the infection, uh, infection um, uh, uh, hit waves, or, or what you call it, like, you will see that uh, most of it are situated around Asia and US and Europe. But basically, they're, they're global. So I mean, the, this shows that this is not just one of the you know, usual groups that are operating in one certain country. These are, um, these are multiple groups working in various uh, different countries and, and using different methods to spread NeverQuest. Okay, dead in the water. See, this is one of the interesting things when we, when we kind of like in, investigated this because as you remember, I, I told you that the Pony was the first stage loader, right? So, so Pony is interesting in the fact that it actually uh, has a vulnerability uh, which make it easy uh, to, uh, to brute force uh, usernames and passwords on the panel. One should not do that, it's obviously it's illegal, but if, if one actually decides to do it, then you can do something like this. You can have a, you can have a whole like set of, uh, of Pony panels and in that way, you can run your, your exploit code. If you want to do that, you can run the exploit code and you can basically dump all the pony uh, panels, uh, all the databases by abusing the vulnerability in the cookie session. So, uh, so one of the interesting things about that is that when you correlate this information from the pony dumps, which are three million usernames and passwords from unique users, when you correlate that with NeverQuest, you get completely the same result. 
which meaning when you look at the first stage of Pony and you look at the second stage never quest and you correlate all the data, you'll see that the data matches. So, so they use Pony just to exfiltrate all the, all the usernames and passwords. That's an easy way to do it. Uh, and then the second stage, they, they, they more targeted uh, the, uh, the, the users with, uh, with, with various kind of uh, social engineering and, and web injects. Data stolen by Pony for the past six months. Um, I mean, again, three million usernames and passwords, uh, unique usernames and pa passwords. Also, you can see that they steal email addresses, uh, they steal email usernames and passwords, uh, SMTP usernames and FTP and as such. And all of that they gather together in a database. And again, you can, you can, again, you can uh, target uh, Pony panels and you can extract that data if you want to. So uh, the web injects, just to get a view of the, of the massive amount of targets, there, there are quite many targets. Uh, latest and, and largest is, is, uh, is the project eight. It, the, the config file itself is, is almost two megabyte. That is very big for a config file, even in a Torrington banker. And that also it, you know, shows that they, they have in total they have more than 300 targets in just that campaign. And that, that adds up with the two megabyte. So it, they are very specific, those injects they're using. We are monitoring 26, that's like uh, 34, I think, uh, projects, different uh, projects right now. In total, more than 1,000 unique targets. So digging into the infrastructure, now, now it gets really the kind of like things that, are, that I think is the most exciting one. Um, we have the command and control servers. Uh, these are the, the 26 campaigns. Some of them have debug information you can use to, to, to uh, distinguish the different campaigns from one another. Um, but this is basically still uh, probably URLs that you can, you, from where you can grab the, the NeverQuest code. When, when you look at the, uh, at the uh, tier one, uh, we, we see a server that is located in Germany. Uh, and if you look at the, at the tier two, you'll see that the server, the tier two server is, is located in Ukraine. And thanks to our, our colleagues in the Ukraine, uh, this oftentimes dump the servers and give it to us so we can actually investigate this further. That is the reason why we have a very good insight into the, into the infrastructure. So we got the, we got the servers from, from, uh, from the Ukraine and, and we dumped the memory and from that we were able to get a more insight into how the operation is actually being run. Uh, one interesting thing is this is the this is the panel. This is where the, the bad guys would log in. Um, they have various functions that you would usually uh, you know recognize, like socks and VNCs and, and locks, and you can you can choose whatever you wanna you wanna choose from from that uh, infrastructure. And and one of the second ones is is the is the main server that is the um, that is the money mule and the command and control itself is located in Russia. Uh, much of this is pointing to Russia, but we believe that some of the Neverquest Rapture guys is also operating out of Ukraine. So this is the panel. This is where you would log in. This is the overview that you have. So uh, basically, you can put in any target you want. And what is very interesting is that uh, the way that they set this up, you can buy a target for a, for a amount of, of dollars, and then you prevent others doing the same crime as a service from, from buying that brand. So you can buy a brand for approximately 10,000 uh, WBMC, which is equivalent to, to US dollars, and, th and that will guarantee you that you own that brand in the crime as a service network, so you don't have any other colleagues, if you like, that are attacking that specific brand because now you have the, the royalty to attack those brands. And this is the way that, the, that it looks uh, when, you, when you walk into it. You can add a new bank. This is the panel you get. You can add a new bank. You can add new web injects. You can do pretty much everything from this panel, uh, and, and again, the, the different access that are being provided are distinct from the campaigns. So since we have many different campaigns, many different groups, they, they, all the groups have their own username and password, and they give them certain rights and they give them certain limitations as well. So this is the money mules. Uh, you can, uh, if you look at the amount of money mules, you can also see that they are actually commenting on, on the on the uh, on, on the on the stuff that they they use the money mule for and how much money is on the accounts. I don't speak Russian, but some of it indicates that they're, they, they're talking about 500,000 in balance, and it's a, it's a UK a likely uh, company. And, and again, the, it's an easy way to control the money mules. So you have a whole panel where you, where you basically can f put you know, new money mules in, and you can, you can move them out if they, if they trick you, because that happens too. Money mules, they also steal money from the criminals, which is cool. Um, 
Yeah, I like that. So in, in this one, this is uh, just an overview, basically how you can also set it up. This is how you can add, how it looks when you add a bank. You can, you can add different functions. You can uh, put your own web injects in there. You can basically you know, put everything in there and, and, and make your own attack. So it, it doesn't, never quest, actually can, uh, can act in different manners depending on what kind of, uh, what kind of campaign you look at. This is just to give you an idea to something we intercepted, which is kind of interesting, isn't it? I mean, if you look at the conversation they're doing, well, we got a, we got a UK bank here with, with two million pounds on the account, and they're conversating about trying to send that to China. So here we talk about like millions of pounds that it actually they have access to already because of the infection, and now the bad guys are communicating and, and actually you know tr communicating about we should try to send just you know two million pounds to that account that we just created in uh, in China. So we talk about criminals that had access to like millions of pounds. And we talk about, when we look at the panels, we can see that the comments and, and, the, and the communication they have, that they have access to approximately about 100 million pounds. I mean, that, I mean that potentially the loss, if you look at it from, from, uh, from our perspective, is huge. Uh, because they have the access, they, they already, what they need to do now is actually just to transport the money in a way that they can actually cash out. And, and I told you already, they do similar stuff as DCEO fraud, setting this stuff up in, in Asia and, and having a, a fake uh, set of companies where they, where they then flowed the, the money through. Because you won't go into a bank and you know, withdraw uh, one million pound without you know, making notice of yourself. So that's the way they do it. So one of the, what is kind of interesting is that you see an overlap as well on, on different families. You see Gukid in there, uh, you see uh, Snifu, uh, you even see Timber in there. And, and just to illustrate it, I put it up on, the, on, the, on this chart. You can see that they, they use the same command and control server, Timba, GoodKid, and Snifo, and they, they even have the same, uh, the same API for controlling some of the functions. Um, so we know, we know that th these guys are also, you know, depending on which group it is, also using other uh, criminal tools, banking trojans, such as, as Timba and GoodKid. So latest development, this is the, one of the, the kind of the interesting stuff that comes here, this is the juicy part. Uh, NeverQuest have done quite a lot lately to, to kind of like hide themselves from, from researchers. Um, they're moving command and controls regularly, particularly the tier ones, making it a lot more difficult to track them. Uh, they block requests, they block IPs. Uh, in that way, they will make it a lot uh, harder for us uh, to extract configs and, and to follow their movements. Several campaigns uh, have moved around, now using various exploit kits with, the, again, the demise of Angular. They are moving towards Neutrino. Neutrino retired just a month ago, so now they are now they're using rig in some of the campaigns that, they are, that we see. The number of active campaigns have dropped within the past two months. However, the number of targets and infections keeps static. Um, moving from Pony to what we know as H1N1, I think is the bird flu thing. Um, it's also called Janitor. That is, that is, they're moving from that is basically just because they're, 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 they're improving uh, their, their own operation because Pony is more or less uh, you know, outdated and also most AVs, most uh, security products is able to find it uh, unless they put a really cool crypto on top of it. Later samples have implemented, this is, the, this is the interesting part, the second stage the DGA. So it doesn't have just one DGA that, that it calculates. It also now has a second stage where it, where it calculates on, on the top level dot top uh, I'm going to show you that in a second. And actually, what is very interesting is the fact that nobody sinkholed that yet, uh, besides from us. So apparently, nobody looks at it. Nobody has seen it yet. Um, but definitely, I don't know, whatever, uh, nobody has actually started sinkholing it. What is also interesting is they implemented SSL on the, on the command control uh, side. So now they transport all traffic through SSL. That means the stolen data and the web injects across SSL. Uh, the config file is encrypted in memory, so it cannot easily be extracted anymore as it used to be. Uh, the active second stage all points to this particular IP address, and you can write it down. You can take a picture of it for your own, you know, so you can, you know, dig, dig further, further into it. If you do passive DNS on it, you'll find a lot of hits uh, with which refers directly to uh, to NeverQuest campaigns. And you said, and I just dug this up like two hours ago, so it's completely fresh. They are still operating from this IP. Uh, you will see some of the domains that they already, you can see on the, on the method of the domains, that these are probably uh, based on the DGAs, which it is, is, is a fact. So what I wanted to do, I think I still have the time for it, is just to give you a, uh, just a demo. Um, I'm just gonna put in all the DGAs uh, into our system here and make it you know, work a bit. Hopefully this will work. 
So what you're, what you're looking at is, is, the, is the whole DGA to be pre-calculated for the next month. So the DGA is, uh, is, is predictable. You can calculate both the first and the second DGA. And what is happening there is that it translates to, to whatever, to whatever you know, if, if it actually has an A record, you will see it here. And that pu puts us right in the middle of, of Russia. You know, I remember it. I told you that most of this comes out of Russia. Well, all of these DGA, those that are registered at least, they all go to that, to that specific IP address, go to that host. Uh, so we use this system for monitoring the DGAs. We use it for monitoring when, the, when it has an A record or when it doesn't. So at any point people register a domain that fits in the DGA, uh, we are able to extract it and then look at whether this is the bad guy, so these are sinkholes. So it, it will go on, yeah, it will go on forever. It will probably go crazy on you before I, I'm done. Um, so you get the idea, I hope. Um, Mm -hmm, yeah, and and the Yara rule. You, you can use this Yara rule uh, freely. Uh, it's it's already been released. Uh, this uh, paper is already available uh, on the website, so you can you can download it and, and use that for for your hunting pleasures. Um, what I like to say is that you know the the updated thing, the the latest development. Uh, if you want the the latest development in EverQuest, if you want any config files, see me. I'm not going to push that up to the website. Come and see me, and I'll, I'll push it to you guys, so you, you get a better overview of what's going on. Apparently, uh, their their new tactics are working. Their, their, their camouflage style is, is working. We don't see people sinkhole it. We don't see people detecting it very often. So it has low AV detection. It has uh, it has low visibility to the to the security community in general because we can see that based on the sinkhole data. And it has to, again two stage GGA. And with that, I think I actually managed this in time. So I think there are. Uh, <laughs> maybe uh, a room for, for questions. Yeah, uh, does anybody have any questions? I think we have time for one maybe, or possibly two. Why do you think there's such a prevalence on foreign banks and foreign institutions? Did you see not really any focus uh, across the US? Uh, I would say that, I mean, looking at, at NeverQuest, it's been, it's been really developing quite fast. Uh, I think that you, the, the point is that you take in different groups and those different groups, they have you know, different you know, objectives. Uh, so, so as I see it, if I understand your question correctly, I would say that uh, 1,000 targets, I mean, we are looking at, at a target list of 1,000. Some of them are something that we would never like look for. I mean, I, I'm not even gonna mention it here, but they also look for password for uh, pornographic websites. I mean, I mean, I don't know if that's worth anything uh, in, in, you know, in the underground economy, but, uh, but they, they look at a broad range of, of various targets where they can, where they can see they can, they can make money. They go from retirement stuff, they go from, from uh, money, uh, they go from um, uh, job recruitment websites, a lot of different you know, kind of industries across a broad various of, of, uh, of, of, of businesses. And in the, in the US in particularly, you see that the most infections were in the US, uh, they've, they've been taking very much um, interest in the U.S. Uh, for the past two, three months, and particularly two of the campaigns running. They, they target Salesforce, they target Monster, they target you know a lot of different things that we in Europe maybe don't even know how much uh, it, what 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 really is, but how they can actually catch out of that we don't know neither. Probably money with recruitment, which is like just an example. I hope that answers your question. Or we can hook up afterwards in the bar, or whatever. Okay, uh, I think that's all we've got time for. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'd just like to say thank you, Peter. And thank you. Everyone, give him a round of applause.